Why is the drought on Long Island so bad? But why is it even worse on the South Shore? Well, here's the thing. A lot of parts of the island have not had an inch of rain or more in a single sitting since May 7th. On May 7th, an Atlantic coastal storm moved ashore. This dropped temperatures down to the upper 40s and practically held them there for the entire day on Saturday, with only a very early part of the morning managing to peak into the 50s. The low 50s. But this is the last day it would get so cold. This would be the last day that the second to last day of highs being in the 50s for some areas, the third to last day of lows being in the 40s. Though a lot of parts of the city managed to have an inch of rain on July 18th, and there were still storms on July, the problem with July storms was, was that they were all scattered and isolated, which doesn't bring that good drought relief and can intensify drought. Basically, here's what happened. What happened was, was that March was below average in terms of rain, but April and May were a bit above average in terms of rain. However, the May rain wasn't as consistent as we, were, as we would like. And starting on May 15th, you began to get into the scatter type of rain that really is what allows drought to intensify in August. In July. That's how the rain on May 14th, not 15th, came down. I made a mistake. But May 19th did bring some good rain, right? Well, there was some precipitation, but it wasn't an inch of rain. This came down in the morning. Temperatures were stuck in the mid-50s until early afternoon. But they did manage to climb back up into the mid-60s before falling back down again down to the low 50s. However, the grass managed to do because the humidity was almost full. And then there'll be some isolated storms in the evening that between the two maybe got close to an inch. That led to a summer heat wave. While we actually had some significant rainfall, the cold front that came instead was a dry cold front. Not good for rain. May 28th also saw some storms with parts of Manhattan getting 0.6 inches and parts of the city getting pretty much no rain at all. And that's how annoying this kind of rain is. The beginning, the opening days of June did have some more consistent precipitation, but it wasn't really anything just to um, be impressed by. And while there was some rain, like about maybe a third of an inch on the morning of June 9th. That wasn't that impressive either. As far as the main days in earlier June, one of the days was largely stuck in the mid to upper 60s, with some places getting into the low 70s. But the next day was warmer and was mainly contrasted into the upper 70s. Meanwhile, the day in June had the rain come down when it was in the, in the upper 60s, hovering around 70, but it did manage to then jump into the mid 80s before a cold front came down the next morning, dropping lows to about 60 degrees. Highs the next day would be around 80. June 12th and 16th saw some rain, but again, nothing significant, just that kind of drizzly rain throughout the whole day, not the consistent rain that we need. July brought near average rain to Central Park, but well below average rain to other parts of the island. The North Shore got got a bit slightly below average, and some places even got a bit above average, but the South Shore was wrecked, and they got very little precipitation at all. The July 16th storms pretty much only dumped rain on the city, the July 18 storms, which broke a daily rainfall record in Central Park with 1.7 inches falling, brought some rain to 
our area largely on the north shore, but where kind of where I live is the boundary between where it is, hence why we were on a boundary for a while, between no dry and abnormally dry, then abnormally dry in, mo in moderate drought, and now between moderate and severe drought. We're kind of on that boundary line. And there's some rain on Friday, but again, not that significant to bring us that much drought relief, maybe a little bit, because it was a similar setup. The July 18th storms were a bunch of torrential downpours that fell throughout the day. We need these all-day rain events, but you can't really have them when um, the highs are largely stuck in the 70s, uh, 80s, and not the 70s. But what happened was that we had this. July 21st brought more severe thunderstorms, which this time, this is how... Our area in the south so it did get a bit of a soaking. July 25th, but that again partly dodged our area. And I believe July 28th. So there were some severe thunderstorms, but it, it was kind of like a hit or miss. August 1st also brought some, some good precipitation, but... It wasn't that much. It was probably about a quarter to half an inch. And then August was really dry after that. And a lot of the rain chances were dodged. A lot of them instead pushed their way up into northern Connecticut, which had a drought intensified even here. And not only Connecticut, southwestern Connecticut, for the north into Connecticut. So when will the drought end? Well, there is a chance of rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I don't foresee it being much. We also have September to October, which can bring nor'easters, but I'd be careful on relying on winter snowfall because number one, some winters have exceedingly little snowfall, and number two, what, the snow to rain conversion rates aren't great for drought relief. Think of it this way. New York City's all-time biggest snowstorm brought only 2.3 inches of liquid precipitation to the city. So, that's all I have to say.